everyone, my name is Adam Bradley and I'm the Director of Open Source Technology at Ionic. And today I'm excited to talk with you about something that we've been working on that has helped us scale our UI library to many different frameworks. So this is a React conference and in order to scale your components to different projects, the answer is, well you just use React. So all right, thank you for attending. Now that we know how to make components work across every single one of your web apps, across your entire organization, because as we all know for the last 30 years, every single web app has only used React. So thank you for attending. All right, so I know I didn't fool anyone there. There might be this assumption that an organization is only on one tech, but what you see here is really closer to reality, especially as time goes on and tech changes. This talk is more for developers that are building components within organizations that fit within this category. The reality is that many large organizations use many different frameworks and libraries and even different versions of these frameworks. Organizations are made up of numerous departments. And within each department, you can come across many different software teams. These teams handle a wide range of anything from content websites, web apps for both mobile and desktop, native apps for iOS and Android, and it goes on and on. And usually each team gets to choose the framework that they'd like to work with. So while teams are choosing the software that works best for them, we very quickly run into some issues managing components with a consistent look and feel. And because different projects are started at different times by different developers using different frameworks, we often run into a lot of problems. It's common, but more of a requirement really, that an organization creates a design system. Basically being able to have a consistent look and feel between all the web assets and software. And here are some of the most well-known and widely used design systems. The most notable, I think, would have to be Google's Material Design. But those were just some of notable design systems that look great. The list goes on and on. While not all of us may have some cool fancy name for our UI libraries, or at least not yet, many have the same goals, and that's a consistent look and providing a well-documented UI library for various teams, both inside and outside of your organizations, to be able to use. And something that we've heard devs say many times is that they've created a design system and just expected other teams to start adopting it. But they quickly hit this wall because other teams simply aren't using the same framework. So if you want your component library to be used by different teams, then it's best to follow their framework's best practices and guidelines. This means you should be able to provide them components that already work in their framework. And a common theme is to use CSS only libraries. And then each framework builds a layer on top of that common CSS library. This includes libraries similar to something like Twitter Bootstrap, but rather custom CSS library for organizations. Now challenges with using CSS libraries within JavaScript frameworks is that the moment that the HTML structure changes or a CSS class change, basically all of those implementations no longer work. And there's this large risk here with trying to depend on a certain version of CSS libraries. This is where the idea of Stencil was first introduced. And before I get too far, I really want to say that Stencil is not attempting to replace frameworks or even act like a framework. React and all the others do an excellent job already. Instead, Stencil is a tool to help build components that work naturally in each of the different frameworks. It's to help developers create components that need to work in as many disconnected projects as it can. And to do this, it uses a common component model that all frameworks are built on top of. So the big question is, but how could that even work? How can one component work in all of the frameworks? So for a component to work everywhere, then at some level, there has to be a common layer that each framework interacts with. And no surprise here, the common layer is the DOM, the document object model. It's the guts to how web pages and web apps actually render and update our browsers. React, Angular, Vue, all of them, interact with HTML elements and text nodes to render their components. The part that's often missed is that all these frameworks render apps in our browsers because of the highly standardized document object model, which is being used by billions of devices as we speak. And I can't even begin to imagine how many times the DOM has rendered a document since the beginning of this slide. Each framework stands on top of this common API. And the cool thing is the DOM can also be extended at the lowest level, which allows us to create components that can be used in each of these frameworks. This brings us to the custom element spec. It's a standardized API that's already built directly into today's browsers. And actually, it's been available without polyfills for a few years now. The ability to have a common low-level component starts with a custom element spec, 
and it's quite powerful in its ability to execute custom JavaScript for individual components within the DOM. The moment that a defined custom element hits the DOM, whether it's from document.createElement, innerHTML, using React, Angular, Review, or whatever, when that element hits the DOM, the browser will execute the custom elements JavaScript. With that ability alone, Stencil is able to tap into the idea of generating a generic component that can work in all frameworks. And yes, despite a lot of the confusion out there, React can work great with custom elements. The part of passing data to these elements, like passing arrays or objects, is where Stencil Compiler is able to auto-generate the bindings for that, to help solve that problem. And no, I'm not even coming close to saying this is a replacement for React. But rather, I'd like to show how we've been able to build a React component UI library that can also be used in Angular and Vue or with no framework at all by using a common component and the Stencil Compiler. Now, relative to a full framework like Angular, React, or Vue, Stencil has very little runtime. This is quite similar to Svelte, where components are generated by a compiler and only with the code that they need. And Stencil is also similar to Preact in that it heavily relies on existing web APIs already within the browser. However, one of the largest differences is how the largest difference from a traditional framework is letting the browser actually notify when an element has been added to the DOM or when an attribute has changed. Now, Stencil Components will extend the DOM's HTML element. And because of that, we're able to take advantage of existing APIs baked directly into the browser. And probably the most useful one here would be the, con would be the connected callback method. With these features alone, Stencil Components are able to manage themselves and really act as their own self-contained application. Beyond that, we've purposely restricted our components to only work with APIs provided by the browser. So to circle back to the original reason why we created Stencil, it was so we could maintain one core version of Ionic while also shipping Ionic, React, Angular, and Vue, and whatever comes next. Ionic is a mobile-focused UI library for the web but I don't really want to focus too much on Ionic too much here. Rather, I want to review our requirements we have as maintainers of the library. It has over 100 components, and we face many of the same challenges as any other team out there. The fact is frameworks, libraries, and best practices continue to change underneath us. However, the components themselves have stayed relatively the same. Sure, we update the design, we fix bugs, we handle issues, but that alone shouldn't require constant rewrites of each component. If there's one thing I really want to make clear is that Stencil is a build time tool. It's a tool to help us generate and maintain reusable components. The problem Stencil is solving for Ionic is allowing our components to work in many of today's frameworks, but without having to maintain multiple libraries and different code bases for each of the frameworks. And an added benefit here is that we can also easily adjust to tomorrow's frameworks or when one of the frameworks has a major break and change. And we can do this all without having to rewrite the component yet again. A big challenge is that each framework handles assigning and reading properties differently. So while it's extremely well documented on how to assign a property to a React component, the internals of how that work under the hood is completely different to how it works under the hood for Angular and Vue. This is where Stencil steps in, to generate these framework bindings from a common component model. So let's dive into some code and create a progress bar component using the standard component model and then we'll generate that into the different bindings for each of the different frameworks and show how to use that in each of the different frameworks. OK, so let's dive into some code and create a simple progress circle component. So here, we're setting the custom element tag name. Inlining the style, since this is a simple example, but usually you'd import a CSS file instead. And this component has three properties, size, stroke, and percent and they act as both properties and attributes on the HTML element. And lastly, we have a familiar render function that returns JSX. Now, I'd love to use a standard templating language here, but the problem is that there's no such thing as a standard templating language, at least there isn't yet. And if we use another custom templating language, we're back to using just another framework. So today, the closest thing we have to standard would have to be JSX, and I think many of you would probably agree. So what we get is a self-contained custom element. Within the dev inspector, you can see that we can change around its attributes. And because it changes those values, the render function will execute again. And the same goes for editing the element's properties. 
So this component works independently of any app structure and handles itself. This is the part that's really powerful because now we can wrap this custom element with framework bindings and ship a framework specific version of this component but while also not having to maintain an additional code base for every single framework. And this is an example of the stencil config file where we're able to have the compiler generate numerous output targets. In our case, we're having to generate source TypeScript files in the packages directory for all of React, Angular, and Vue outputs. But it's also generating just vanilla custom elements. And it's creating readme markdown files. So the left side shows the internal auto-generated component. And the right side shows the result of that component and how a React developer would use it. They would import and use these components no differently than any other React component. So for example, the JSX tag name is in Pascal case, which is just the expected norm for it to use with React components. Whereas a React developer, I'm sorry, with an Angular developer, they'll expect these component tags to be dash cased. With Ionic Angular, we quickly realized that we needed to provide our users with Angular components and not custom elements. This is how Angular developer would import Ionic and use it in their template. It doesn't matter that the components are actually using component custom elements. To Angular developers, they're using Ionic no differently than the rest of their libraries. This includes inputs, form controls, host listeners, and all the other Angular APIs. And I'm not trying to convince everyone to hand code custom elements instead of React or Angular but I certainly can show how that custom element spec has been extremely powerful for Stencil to build framework bindings so that we can ship Ionic in each of the frameworks. Now we talk a lot about JavaScript patterns and each component model, but honestly, I think the most challenging part about a component is its styling. Just like having to find a common denominator for the component model, we also need to land on a styling that works everywhere too. Luckily, the web standards has us covered here again, and shocker, it's something called CSS. Now, from what I've seen out in the wild, there's this love it or hate it aspect of Shadow DOM. I think the big discussion is that Shadow DOM is great for some things, but it's not the end-all solution for every single component problem. And in my experience, Shadow DOM has been great for Ionic, especially since many apps depend on it and develop against our API. At the same time, we're constantly making improvements and changes to Ionic, but avoiding large breaking changes in HTML structure and CSS classes. This is a challenge Ionic has because it's reused by so many external projects. A standalone app, on the other hand, that isn't sharing components doesn't have the same use case as something like your design system. Think of the past major version updates for a CSS library. If the HTML structure ever changed or a CSS class name changed, then its framework implementations often broke. Between Ionic v4 and v5, there was a major design update to closely follow material design in iOS. What I'm proud of here is how the many components had a major re rewrite at all levels, but the user wrote these components in their apps no differently between v4 and v5. There wasn't specific HTML or CSS classes that they needed to change. And stencil output targets go beyond just framework bindings. Using the same idea, the compiler can take information from each component and build various outputs. For example, it can auto-generate documentation and component data. It can also create components that can be pre-rendered on Node.js. The compiler is able to apply heavy optimizations after static analysis. And it does this by TypeScript walking the AST of each component. Every bit of metadata is then used to customize the runtime and allow the, the runtime to only use what it needs. And not only is it able to apply optimizations, we can use the information to auto-generate docs. The source of stencil components uses TypeScript, and under the hood, TypeScript has many great features, one of them being custom transformers. In the before custom transform, we're able to gather useful metadata about each component. In the after transform, we can take that metadata and apply some optimizations to both our runtime and user components. And there's no shortage of great doc site generators. First one that comes to mind is DocuSource. With Stencil, we can generate a JSON file that includes metadata about every component in the library. This includes documentation for props, attributes, events, listeners, CSS variables, and many more. So you're free to take this auto-generated data and plug it into any system, or you can just have Stencil auto-generate readme files, which work great inside of GitHub or NPM. So to close this all out, you really cannot go wrong with choosing React. It's an excellent choice for app development. But what Stencil is solving is a little bit different. 
With Ionic, we wanted to maintain one code base but work everywhere and be able to adjust quickly. If you have a project that has a similar use case, then a project like Stencil may be something to take a look into further. I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. I had a blast. Hopefully, you try out Stencil and let us know how it goes. Thank you.